Are you certain she didn't kill him? Let's postpone until next week. I scraped several cinnamon roll crumbs off the coffee table, concerned the feisty secretary would bestow her trademark death look upon me again. Three times in under ten minutes had broken her record. Papa, squat, and settle that keister, Kellen. Your incessant pacing has inflamed my arthritis. President Power will oust Kane Endicott in a jiffy. Prior to stomping toward the door, Ursula's dictatorial and ornery assistant switched off her Victorian lamp and locked her vintage mirrored desk. If that rocky discussion shudders your innards, she added, flicking her pearl-adorned neck in the opposite direction, yesterday's bickering would have ruptured your blood vessels. Professors and students congregated outside the building to identify the source of the ruckus. I shrugged noncommittally while she hastily escaped Prentice Hall in her high-performance jogging shoes, charcoal gray pantsuit, and festive pashmina, precariously dangling four-inch pumps and a bedazzled handbag from her fingertips. A terse mention of her husband purchasing almost impossible to locate theater tickets for that night accompanied her plummy voice. Attending a hot new musical sounded way more appetizing than performing my imminent song and dance routine. After tossing the dirty napkin into the trash bin, I tiptoed closer to Ursula's door to listen for any death blows signaling the end of their argument. I wasn't normally prone to eavesdropping, but snooping occasionally happened when something important... Okay, yes, it was true. I listened to other people's conversations ad nauseum. Nana D suggested I inherited my nosiness from her, but mostly I believed it was my adorable charm and unique dedication to pursuing the truth, an occupational hazard for academic folks with a keen love of mysteries and drama. After 15 months back home, I fully embraced my innate tendency to solve unusual homicide cases, only because I couldn't retain any self-control from minding my own business. Behind the wood-paneled interior door, Ursula shouted something about thousands of dollars over budget and lacking the proper authority, to which Kane retorted, African art is expensive. Did you honestly think I would be the laughing stock of all the institutions in our immediate academic circle? Come on, President Power. This is unnecessary. Surely you'd agree I am capable of... His voice dropped too low, so I pressed my five-foot-nine frame against the door to overhear the remaining conversation. As Ursula responded, the outer door from the main hallway blasted open, and Dean Fern Terry raced inside like a galloping giraffe. A single drop of sweat trailed the center of her creased forehead. We were both scheduled to meet with Braxton's esteemed president, but I wanted to disappear like the rabbit in a cheesy magic trick to avoid whatever hell fury was about to rain down. Especially when Fern trapped her foot under the corner of a leather ottoman, tumbled to the floor, and inadvertently hurled her giant stack of folders in my direction. Ursula and Kane must have heard the commotion, because within the subsequent five seconds I fell backward against the interior office door just as Kane opened it. I landed spread eagle on the carpet, littered with Fern's ridiculous paraphernalia, and cringed as Kane's cup of hot tea puddled on the front of my khakis in an overly sensitive and embarrassing spot.